I was diagnosed with um, stage three heart failure. So my ejection fraction, which is the ability for your heart to pump, was a 1920 and normal is a 51 to 53. Uh, my wheel bad. maker was 90 plus blocked. Tachycardia we see in Costa Rica where your heart beats very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I had um, my left ventricular wall had, was, was enlarged 200%. And then the heart wasn't firing right either. So I had is AFib or whatever it's called where it doesn't fire correctly. Yes. So pretty much I was diagnosed with everything you could possibly have wrong with the heart. Hi, Ken. Thank you so much for joining me today. Your story is super inspiring. I know my audience will get a lot out of it. I wouldn't be surprised if we even save one or two lives here today. So thank you so much for joining. Oh, it's awesome to be here, man. It's really good to be here. Thank you. So uh, in 2017, at 430 pounds body weight, you were diagnosed with several heart issues uh, that resulted in your heart only working at 10% of capacity. Um, what led you to that level of weight gain uh, and ill health? What was the sort of um, path of that? Well, I am a, uh, I'm a, I'm a Southern redneck. I grew up in, in, in the land of, of fried chicken, and eating lots of meat and um, and 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 all the grease you could possibly put in your on your plate. And I also, on top of that, had a mom who grew up in Texas, so she was a great Tex-Mex cook. And then my father owned an Italian restaurant, so um, I grew up in a family of food, and so food was celebration for me. Mm -hmm. And for me, I began to eat and eat and eat because I love to eat. And then I think like anything that turns into an addiction and, um, and I became a, I became a food addict and basically I love to, I love to uh, enable other people to eat just like me. <laughs> that was yeah. exactly it. So food was love almost. Oh, it was, it was me. But that was my mom had me when she was 47. I was an only child. So for me, the way she, she showed me, she loved me was to feed me and she did a great job at it. And so when I was an active teenager, you know, I kept my weight pretty, pretty under control, although I was always pudgy. But then once I got into kind of adult life and got into the sedentary, sedentary lawyer, law student, lawyer life, uh, my weight just w went off the went off the charts. OK. Uh, and so when you got up to that weight, how were you coping with day to day life? Was it a struggle kind of physically or mentally? Yeah, I mean, you know, the interesting thing was when people would say to me, you're so light on your feet. I mean, because I would, I danced, I, I still exercised, I, oh, wow. you know, um, I, I, I live in Costa Rica and at least for the last, you know, for the first seven years in Costa Rica, I was going up and down the farm. It was hard, but on the inside, there was an athlete. There's no doubt about it. On the inside, there was this will to be normal in terms of my physical activity. But at 50, it caught up with me. Right. And that I, was a gradual thing. So, you know, I was, I kind of hovered into 300 and then kind of floated up to, you know, 350 and then, you know, then slowly. But when, you know, when I, when I've crossed 400 and who knows when that was, because I didn't weigh myself very much. Um, that was probably the time when I started realizing I couldn't breathe anymore. Wow. Okay. Um, and what were the exact issues that you were diagnosed with when, you know, when it went really bad? So it, it was, it was in 2016, I was diagnosed with um, stage three heart failure. So my ejection fraction, which is the ability for your heart to pump was a 1920 and normal is a 51 to 53. Um, in terms of the uh, amount of blood your heart can pump yeah, out in one eventually. pump. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, my was wheel maker was 90 plus blocked and the one wow. to the left of it was 60 blocked and another one was 80 blocked. Wow. And this um, is coronary arteries. Coronary arteries. And then I, then I had, um, uh, uh, tachycardia we see in Costa Rica where your heart beats very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, my left ventricular wall had, was, was enlarged 200%.
So, wow. so wow. and then it was then the mar- then the heart wasn't firing right either. So I had is AFib or whatever it's called where it doesn't fire correctly. Yes. So pretty much I was diagnosed with everything you could possibly have wrong with the heart. Wow. And wow. How frightening was that? It was uh it was surreal. I mean, I got off a plane. I got off a plane in 2000 December 16th, 2016. Right. Couldn't breathe. Took me seven stops just to get to through the little airport to baggage claim. And they took me out in a wheelchair. I got in my I got in the car. They drove me to the hospital. And all these things began to present themselves, but I was stable. So I went home. After that, I went home with the idea that I was going to come back and have all these tests the next week. And I'm sitting on my front porch at five in the morning in Costa Rica. And I'm sitting there and I'm praying. I'm going, God, what do you want me to see? I don't, I don't get it. I, I get it. I'm listening. And mm-hmm. nothing came. And the only thing that came, Paul, was to type into my Kindle heart disease and diet. Mm-hmm. And I did. And there were 247 books on heart disease and diet at that time. I had the uh-huh. screenshot. <laughs> and, um, and, and I thumbing through them, Ornich, uh, you know, all of the different ones. And I land on prevent and reverse heart disease by Caldwell Esselstyn. Mm-hmm. And I bought it and I read it between six and 10 in the morning. Wow. And I told my wife, I said, Yami, I'm going to have um, my first whole food plant-based no oil meal for lunch today. <laughs> we, we lunch at 11 o'clock. Nice. And Paul, I haven't violated the diet once, not one wow. time in 47 months. Wow, that's amazing. And so here's a crazy thing. One more thing. And one more thing that you just, you can't explain. 48 hours after I read the book, I'm in a team meeting with my coffee company and we're talking about tea. And two (laughs) of the people in the meeting say, what are you doing with this situation you have? I said, well, I'm eating a whole food plant-based no oil meal. He said, a no oil diet. And they're like, well, we are too. We started two weeks ago. Wow. I'm like, you kidding me. (laughs) And they're like, Yeah. And I said, well, tell me about it. He says, well, it's this doctor named Caldwell Esselstyn. <laughs> How do you know about Caldwell Esselstyn? Well, we met his son, Rip, um, two weeks ago at a party in Austin. Wow. And he gave us a copy of his book. They had gotten a copy of the same book I'd read 48 hours earlier. What's the odds of that? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. Then six <laughs> weeks after I was diagnosed with all these things, right, I get an email from Ann Esselstyn. Mm-hmm. Ann Esselstyn, yeah. Dr. Esselstyn's wife, and says, yeah. all well, would like to have a, uh, a conversation with you. Turns out that Rip is good friends with the owner of, our, of the tea company we work with. Wow. And, and so out of the blue, a guy, I read his book on my, my porch in the middle of the morning on the 16th. I'm having a conversation with Caldwell Esselstyn six weeks later. Wow, that's fantastic. Go figure that. Go figure that. Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy world. That's all I know. I know, man. <laughs> How did uh, other friends and family respond to your new diet? Uh, well, my wife, uh, she was just a blessing to cook for me. She fought it for a while. And then finally, I think she she was having problems with asthma and gastritis and and hypoglycemia. And so she went on the diet with me about six weeks in or six months in. Right. And she has cured her asthma. She has no asthma. Nice. She has no hypoglycemia. She has no stomach issues anymore. No migraines. Skin and hair much better. And so she swears by it. So she's been, she's been on the diet now for 42 months. Wow. That makes it so much easier when your partner is on board, hey? Wow. For sure. That's lovely. Oh, bless her. That's great that she's had such success as well. Um, and so, when I did. Yeah, that's lovely. So how was the road to recovery? How did that go? So I, I was doing the normal that you do as a heart failure patient going through cardiac rehab. They gave me stents. Um, I was going through the normal cardiology process. And in April, four months after I'd been diagnosed, 
The doctor who was handling my rehabilitation says, Ken, you need to get checked out. Sheet white right after a cardio, you know, physical therapy, cardiac rehab therapy session. Mm-hmm. You guys don't understand. You're at the highest grade on the treadmill and you're doing more than you should be doing. And I need you to get checked out. Maybe you were misdiagnosed or whatever. Right. Wow. So in May, I go to the cardiologist, the one that had talked about pacemakers and the word transplant had been used once oh, early wow. in the process. And I walk in and he does the echocardiogram, the, the, the ultrasound on my heart. He does it three times. I know I could hear the machine recycling and doing this. He's texting. Another doctor comes in <laughs> looking at it and he looks at me and says, Ken, can I see you in my office in 40 minutes? I went sheet white again. Mm-hmm. He goes, grab my hand. And he says, no, no, you don't understand, Ken. Your heart's improved 86% in four months. That's medically impossible. Wow. So the swelling had reduced by, by 50%. Mm-hmm. So I get off the, get out of that. I call Dr. Esselstyn and rip on the phone and they're going, we can't, wow. We, we can't understand that, but that's awesome. Will you come speak at our next event? And so they flew me up to go speak at their event in August. That was eight months I had been diagnosed. And at that point, I'd lost 138 pounds. Wow. And, and I'd lost 100 at my first checkup. And then 10 months post, 10 months post uh, diagnosis, I go back for a checkup. And this time, the cardiologist looks at me and I go, is it good? And he goes, no, no, it's not good. It's great. <laughs> it's as if you've never had any past or present heart problem. Wow. And I ran my first official 5K race the week after that 10-month checkup. And now I, I, run, I run 10Ks all the time. Wow. That is amazing. Wow. My, my heart my, is completely normal. That is fantastic. So, so your widow maker was at least 90% blocks, you said. One of the other coronary arteries, 80%. Do you know what they're down to now? Have, have they talked about those figures? They're normal. Okay, so like, like you said, like nothing. Um... I mean, you know, the stents, they put the stents in because that was the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. But the stents are basically there and they're not even being used anymore. Um, uh, yes. You know, the whole idea of eating leaf, green leafy vegetables and stimul- stimulating your endothelial process mm-hmm. and creating all this nitric oxide flowing through your veins creates this natural bypass phenomenon where your circular system, your circular, your circular, your, I can't speak in English anymore. <laughs> I struggle at the best of times. <laughs> all of the veins and arteries become much more efficient mm-hmm. and you begin to heal yourself. I mean, it just yeah. heals. It's just amazing. And yeah. uh, so just to give you a sense right now, I'm doing a 30 minute hit training where I can take my heart from 80 to 162, and then it dropped five beats within the first minute. Wow. So, I mean, my, well, my cardiologist has gone plant-based. He is now plant-based. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's some proper um, – I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. That, that's a really good uh, recommendation, isn't it? If your cardiologist is doing it, <laughs> you're obviously doing something wrong. <laughs> it's highly ironic, too, and he's also a cyclist. He bike, wow. He bikes. And he's like saying, I can't get over how I, how quickly I can recycle. I mean, I, I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the pain. I, I, I get my energy back a lot quicker the next day. You know, I'm like, well, that's what it is. I mean, he's like, but he just, I can't believe you. So, I mean, so I've lost 201 pounds in four years. Wow. I gained 17 pounds of muscle weight. And I've gone from a size 56 inch waist to a 34, 36 inch waist now. Wow. Yeah, that's the same as me. <laughs> that's fantastic. My hat is off to you, sir. That is really, really good. So, you know, to have gone from 90 to 80% blocked and whatever to not being detectable now, you've got to reverse the atherosclerosis, would you say? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think, I mean, I, you know, I. I'm sure there's some, but it's going in the, it's going in the other direction. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, they, they're not, right now, I'll give you a sense. My ejection fraction is a 62. 
Nice. That's like an athlete. My resting, my resting heart rate is right around a 55 now. Wow. That's impressive. So, I mean, you know, and I, I still weigh 248 pounds right now. Yeah. That is amazing. My hat is off to you, sir. My hat is off to you. That's some amazing dedication. I love it. Um, so what does a typical day's eating look like for you nowadays? <clears throat> so I lost most of my weight on a much more carbohydrate carbohydrates because a plant-based diet is so much easier when you're eating carbs and carbs are not an enemy. I mean, I found that out. I mean, I lost 200 pounds eating 60% carbs, uh, 20% fat and 20% um, uh, protein, mm-hmm. only 60 grams of protein, 70 grams of protein a day. Problem was I hit a, I hit a wall. Mm-hmm. So now I'm actually eating about, uh, 30, 40% protein a day now in okay. my, in my meal. So about 180 grams of protein. So a typical day for me, I mean, the, the typical day for me is a half cup of dried oatmeal or, um, entire integral, um, whole mm-hmm. oatmeal, not processed, uh, a cup of protein powder, a cup of blueberries, a cup of, um, of, um, almond milk. And then mm-hmm. every meal, I eat two to three cups of cooked green leafy vegetables. Every single wow. meal. What are your faves? So my number one fave is Tuscan kale. Mm-hmm. I love the big, the dinosaur kale, the ones that are the big green ones. Yeah. Um, bok choy. Oh, I love um, bok. Oh, bok choy is awesome. Swiss chard. And then I guess my least favorite, but I eat a lot of it, is just good old curly kale. It's just a little bit yeah. more chewy and, and that. Yeah. But I eat six to ten cups of green leafy vegetables a day. Wow, that's impressive. I love it. And <laughs> then for lunch, usually it's my big meal. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be usually a roasted vegetable, like roasted squash, um, uh, zucchini, whatever, a couple of cups of beans. And then maybe one cup of integral rice or a cup of quinoa Mm -hmm. and then my greens. And then at night usually is a little bit lighter. I'll have like a baked potato and then I'll put in it. um, One of my favorite things is to take uh, green leafy vegetables and chop them up and mix in an avocado with them with some nutritional yeast. And it makes kind Mm -hmm. of like a avocado-y mushy thing to put on the potato that gives a nice savory. Yeah. And I'll have that. And then the other thing I eat a lot of is um, uh, uh, soy curls. They're dehydrated, yeah, like tempeh. Yeah. But uh, we stir fry those, and we use them. We make buffalo wing salads, and we make other things like that. But usually what I just described to you is a daily food for me. Nice. And I, I do eat some protein powder because in order to get yeah. the – in order to get 180 grams of protein on a plant diet, you got to you got to supplement with some protein powders. For sure, I totally agree with that. What I say to people is, you know, if you're not a strength or a physique athlete, you don't need to worry about protein powder. Just eat a healthy whole food diet with, you know, some legumes and some quinoa. You know, and if if you are an athlete, you know, you maybe need to go a bit more higher towards protein. I say like one or two servings of a more refined processed protein food, you know, in the context of an otherwise whole foods, plant-based diet. Uh, is it out optimal? Probably not, but you'll probably be okay. It's my, it's my feeling. Well, I never eat protein alone either. I'm always mixing yeah. it with blueberries or I'm mixing it with oatmeal or whatever. Yeah. And the other side of it is, is too, is that I reached a plateau and I really need to build muscle and I'm 53 years old. And so, um, I, you can lift all you want, but you've got to get the the protein in there to make it happen. And then that's what's actually causing me to break my, my, my plateau right now and start to lose weight again. Yeah. Fantastic. Well done you. Um, does it help living in Costa Rica? I understand that you have some of the very best uh, fruit in the world. Is that true? Oh, I mean, if you were going to be whole foods, plant-based, uh, Costa Rica would be the place to be. And I have a garden which you can't see right now because it's too cloudy, but I can show you. It's really right here. Right. And we grow between 70 and 80 bunches a week of green leafy vegetables. Oh, you grow your own. Fantastic. Oh, it's completely organic. So we grow all of our own fruits and vegetables here. And so literally um, all the bananas, all the plantains, all the limes, 
all the mangoes, um, grapefruit, um, you name it. We grow here on the farm, and then I have this big garden, and I grow everything here that I can. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, do you miss uh, animal products at all? Not at all anymore. Now, you're talking about a guy who used to kill a half a chicken like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. um, but it actually repulses me now. It, wow. um, I, my palate has changed so much that – that I see like a big steak and I, you know, you have, you find yourself turning your head. You're like, I know, right. you know, not to judge whoever's eating in front of you, but most of the time the people that are eating in front of me now, they feel uncomfortable because they know, they know, they knew me when I was 430 pounds. They're going like, well, Ken got to be 430 pounds by eating this steak. So mm -hmm. maybe, you know, so maybe it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. you know, the crazy thing about eating plant-based Paul is you don't have the grease in your kitchen anymore. It's easier to wash your dishes. Sorry, it's easier dish, to prepare yeah. your food. Uh, you don't have to worry about your freezer going out and losing all your meat. I mean, right. it's just a completely different world. It is. When I was bodybuilding, you know, I was eating five large chicken breasts a day. And I used to joke. It was a half joke. This might be a bit off color, so excuse this. But I used to joke that I was half the day preparing food, eating food, and then try to eliminate like all this meat, you know, which has not got fiber. Felt like it took half my day up just to do these things. I right? know. <laughs> and, you know. The crazy thing is you start looking at it and you start looking at the people that eat a lot of meat, either they're doing keto or whatever they're doing. And, and you go and you actually calculate, you sit down with them and say, okay, let's just put in what you just ate today in fitness pal. Okay. And they're eating maybe 20 grams of fiber. Yeah. Maybe. I eat 70 to 80 all day long. 60 to 80 grams of fiber all day long because of all the green leafy vegetables. You don't spend a lot of energy um, trying to keep yourself clean inside. Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I imagine that you feel very grateful towards Dr. Esselstyn. Would that be fair to say? Oh, man. I'll tell you, I had this, uh, here I am in upstate New York on a stage. There's 800 <laughs> people on it, you know, in the thing. And I'm not afraid to public speak. I was a lawyer my whole life. But right. I'm getting up like, what am I going to say to all these people? You yeah. Know? And I look over and I go, I found this guy on my Kindle. And literally his, his work since he's been, it was 50 of, you know, kind of moving this along for cardiology patients has changed my trajectory. I mean, it's just, it's literally changed it. Mm -hmm. And I have a rower. He's a, he was an Olympic gold medalist rower in 1956. Of course you had forgotten that. Yes. And so when I got my concept to rower and put it in my gym, and every time I get on the rower now, I think about him and I think about how I'm a plant-based rower just like Dr. Esselstyn's a plant-based rower. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah, I love it. How, how, good does it. how good does it feel to you to, to disseminate this important information that you've learned to others? Oh, I mean, that is, we, we had a little offline conversation about that. One of the things that I, I tend to be a proselytizer about everything. I mean, everything that's passionate to me, my faith is one, but the other one is plants. And, and, you know, the people that have listened to me and they really have taken it to heart, their lives have changed and they come back and they go, my life is completely changed. I haven't eaten plants in two years. For example, my best friend since second grade, he said, we've done everything together, good, bad, and indifferent. <laughs> and so I might as well try it. And he tried it for six months. He's been doing it for two years and he says it's changed his life. Nice. I mean, there's so much to be said from this. And, and, you know, I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, you know, I was a lawyer for so many years. And when I found out the truth as experienced in all these movies, like forks over knives and what the health and all the movies that uh, game changers is another one. And you look at these things and you have experienced them. You go, why would you ever not try it? Just try it. Yeah. You've got a, you got a heart problem or diabetes or, or you're just a 53 year old man that can't do what you did when you were 30. Why don't, why don't you just try it and see? And most people that do try it go, wow. I feel like I'm 30 again. 
120. Yeah. Ken, I, I sense that you have like a lot of love inside you, and I think that being of service to others, you know, I think that brings us a lot, a lot of joy, doesn't it? Would, would you say that it's made sense out of your suffering in, in some way as well? So, would say that again? What was the question? Would, would you say that kind of being of service and helping others, does that help to make sense out of some of the suffering you've been through that now you can, you know, be of service and help your fellow man? Yeah, in my faith tradition, in my faith tradition, um, there's a very famous scripture that says that God allows us to suffer so that we can then empathize and understand the suffering of others and then walk with them through it. Mm-hmm. And so so mm-hmm. for me, um, one of the things that I see now is like I'll be, you know, I, I won't go up. I mean, I won't. But if I was engaged, I would. But I can tell you where my heart is. If I'm sitting in an airport line and I used to fly a lot before COVID. Mm-hmm. And I used to remember people looking at me. I was 430 pounds. And I know what was going through that person's mind. Is that guy going to be sitting next to me on the plane? Mm-hmm. And, and now when I see someone that looked like me four years ago, um, I have this incredible desire to come alongside and saying, you know, y- you can take control of this. You don't have to listen to doctors and you don't have to listen to all the the noise out there about all the different fads and all those different things. It really goes back down to what's so simple and very commonsensical. Eat something that's natural with plants and stay away from the, the, the Western diet and you will begin to change. It's not, this is not like some um, revolutionary concept. It's the way we were designed to eat from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. I believe, um, I mean, I, I don't know a whole lot about religion. I keep an open mind to everything, but I don't know a whole lot. But I understand with the Garden of Eden, was it something like we were given like the fruits of the tree and the seeds of the land? And then when right. we, so, we kind of sinned and then we started to eat animals, Is that have I got that right? That's right. That's right. And that's one of the things that's interesting there. So, so um, that before the fall before before we ate of the tree that we shouldn't have eaten of right god said you can eat all the fruits and the seeds and the trees because before the fall there was no death and so you can't eat right. something that's hasn't died and so that was the way it was and then right. after the fall we were allowed to eat that but it was very highly regulated at least at least one group of people, the, the, the Israelites, it was very highly regulated what they could and couldn't eat. And even today, uh, an Orthodox Jew is going to eat, uh, not going to eat pork and, and, and not going to eat shellfish. And it's very interesting, right? right? And then you start looking around the Mediterranean, right? That whole area. It's still, back, back in the day, before it was westernized, it was very plant-based driven. And the olive oil they ate was olive oil that came hand pressed out of their own trees right so there was a very i mean you know what are, what's your go-to when you go out to eat it's either for me it's either uh eastern food or it's middle eastern food yeah i mean if i find some falafel or some um something like that that's my yeah. haven in a, in a plant-based world yeah well that's what they eat. yeah <laughs> for more than for more than you wanted to know but yeah <laughs> um so you're talking about your, your faith. Was your faith helpful to you in any way in, in terms of recovery? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, well, first of all, even Caldwell Esselstyn, the doctor who wrote the book, said, we can't explain how, why your cardiomyopathy, we can't explain why your heart shrunk, why it's normal. Wow. Wow. Medically, we can't explain it. My cardiologist said medically it's impossible. My internist said medically impossible. So certainly I believe completely that God used plants and used me putting my skin in the game Mm -hmm. as an act in my healing. There's no doubt about it. God has wants you to have skin in the game, right? It's, this is not just like a poof. He can, but there's this idea of like, you got to be involved in it. And so for me, the plants was my act of doing it. And now it's the gym. Every time I go into the gym and I'm doing, you know, dude, I'm doing like, you know, 
five sets of heavy deadlifts, right? You know? I'm completely thinking about the guy that was 430 pounds that couldn't walk to the gym before and going, thank you. It's my way of, it's my way of, it's my way of praise. It's my way of worship, the gym and eating and all those things now are an expression (laughs) of my faith. And it's really, really a beautiful thing. Yeah. (laughs) So that's what happened. So I was healed. There's no doubt about it. Definitely was healed using plants. I love it. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up today, Ken? Well, you know, I just appreciate, I mean, when, when I, I didn't know you before. You reached out to me on Facebook. But all of us that have health issues or want to be healthier are on a journey together. Mm-hmm. And right now, like somewhere in the world, there's so much noise everywhere about politics, about religion, about what we should eat, who we should be with, what we should buy, all of those things, right? Yeah. And one of, one of the things I've found is, is that eating this lifestyle is a way to become very simple about a very important thing in our life. I mean, what we put in our mouth and eat every day is the most fundamental thing we do as human beings to survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if we, if we just got simple about that and didn't listen to all the noise and just used our common sense and looked around us and say, wow, that guy lost 200 pounds. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we, we would all be so much better. Yeah. We would all be so much better. It's all there for us to see, isn't it? You know, we just need to. It is. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Ken. Do you have any uh, social media accounts or, or anything else you'd like to promote? I mean, I uh, would love for you guys to um, uh, look me up. Um, I'm, I'm Ken Lander on Facebook. Um, I'm, a, I'm with a company called Thrive Farmers. So I actually am a coffee farmer in Costa Rica, and we have a company that, that actually helps farmers take their coffee to market and tea farmers to take their tea to market. And so um, farming is a big part of my life. And so you can find me on the web and, and I'm always, always available to give a, 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 a hand and a word of encouragement to anyone who's on a journey like this. Bless your heart. Ken, thank you for your time and for all the work you did to promote this healthy lifestyle for the benefit of others. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, brother.